what, 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 what Socrates does in the Republic is he tells us through, through different stories why it is that certain truths uh, uh, are, elusor, uh, are elusive in this illusory world and why it is that we must live in a way that strikes many of us, particularly children of the Enlightenment. As children of the Enlightenment at this point in modernity, we, we are the beneficiaries of, of the two great legacies of, uh, of modernity, more particularly of the Enlightenment movement uh, within modernity, and that is, of course, capitalism and a more or less representative uh, 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 democracy. And so to us, right, uh, as, 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 as the owners of bling and, 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 and being possessed uh, of the right to vote, not that many of us take advantage of it, uh, to us, we, we, we recoil in horror when we say, oh, you know, you know the point of the whole republic is, is to live in a totalitarian uh, 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 communist state. <laughs> that's, that's the way to be. <laughs> Plato's argument is that that is the way to be. If we are to ever have a hope of achieving uh, what is the ultimate objective of the species and the reason that we are here at all, and that is to seek and maybe even one day find what our soul yearns for, which is the truth. So, Glaucon asks the eternal question of what is justice? And that begins, that essentially begins the Republic. And so, uh, Socrates suggests to Glaucon, well, wouldn't you, wouldn't you need to know whether and how you would even know justice if you saw it? And Glaucon is, well, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I kind of thought that was assumed in the question. <laughs> you know, I do, I do understand that I would need to, to be able to have the capacity to even know justice if I were to, if I were to ever see it. And so Socrates says, since you have to ask the question, what is justice? That, that inherent in, in, in the question uh, is, is the reality that you've never seen justice. None of us has ever seen justice. It's, it's, it's what makes, it what make, what makes the, the question eternal. And so if we were to ever see that which we have never seen in our lives, what frame of reference would we have? We have no frame of reference. And yet we we instinctively know that if we were to ever see it, we would know it. It, it, it would make sense to us. From deep within, something inside of us would say, this strikes me as just. Because <laughs> evidently, there are occasions in our life, perhaps there are all too many, when something deep inside of ourselves says, this is unjust. This, this ain't right. Whatever justice is, man, that ain't it. So deep within ourselves must have the sentiment in, in, in an almost pre-rational, uh, uh, irrational, I don't mean non-rational, irrational way, right? A, 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 a feeling way, not necessarily a, 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 a cognitive explainable with words way. Justice must be something which is felt from within to be so because we have a problem articulating it and we have no frame of reference for understanding it given that we've never, we've never experienced it. And, and, and in other words, what, 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 what Plato is inviting us to appreciate is that to begin to understand the reality of justice is, is to open ourselves to the possibility that it can only be understood from a very, a very deep and ancient place from within the being. And ultimately what Plato will suggest in the Republic is that it's our soul. 
it is our soul it is from our soul that we ask the eternal question what is justice and, and another way of saying this is what 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 plato is asking us to uh, 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 to to contemplate is the possibility that we we must and and perhaps only can access certain eternal truths through our soul which which involves our rational beings to be sure right our intellect must be applied our 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 our, our socratic latent inherent genius must, must be brought to bear to the inquiry but it, but something even deeper and more ancient and more and more glorious right another way of knowing must also must also be brought to bear and, and it may not be brought to bear cognitively because who among us have the experience right of bringing our soul to bear on a question but but i think what plato is also su suggesting at least inferentially is that in the process of of opening ourselves up to the possibility that our soul will be invested in their inquiry in the pursuit of truth that's perhaps the only way that it can be brought to bear is we have to be open to the possibility a that we got a soul and that b our soul right will help us right in this journey to begin to understand these eternal truths the republic in other words uh, as 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 anything else that Plato left us is 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 layered. It's layered and it's complex, right? And it, it's beautiful. It's beautiful because it it respects our our willingness and our ability to to go to what is for many of us, I think, an uncomfortable place. The possibility that we could know truth using something beyond our mere our mere intellect. Right, and Plato would say that's because we 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 have more than intellect. We have we have an understanding, of, a very faint one, but we have an understanding of the eternal. Right, that touches our intellect. Right, because it has a faint recollection of certain truisms, like beauty, true love, justice, and so. Uh, uh, and so Glaucon says, I, 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 think I'm, I think I'm with you. I think I'm with you. I'm at least open. Glaucon is saying, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm open to, to the journey that you are beginning to suggest is, is going to be a super rational investigation. And Socrates is like, all right, cool. Then let, let's go. So Socrates makes, uh, 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 makes, makes this uh, a, a rhetorical uh, intellectual uh, a move of going from the general to the specific right and and there sometimes one goes from the specific to explain the general right she will explain a, a specific example right and then scale it up and there uh, and then draw uh, a corollary uh, uh, an understanding that uh, that uh, that as as with the specific so with scaled up the general Another way to do it is, is to suggest, look, this is the nature of the general, right? And as it is at the general, uh, 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 so is it when you drill down uh, in, in, into the specific. Uh, and, and so in the Republic, Plato, Plato uses both, uh, both methodologies. Uh, but in the beginning, he starts uh, by moving from the general to the, uh, uh, to the specific. And so we, we see Socrates first lay out uh, the structure of the ideal society and then he explains uh what what's happening at the specific level uh, in other words then he explains uh the platonic imagination of the human soul and its parts our soul has parts right he, ex he then explains the, uh, uh, the nature of the human soul and its and its parts, uh, our, our 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 soul is comprised of a trinity of parts, three parts, and 
and then Plato has Socrates suggest to us that the, the, the efficacy, the righteousness of the society being structured in three parts is because in structuring it in these three parts, it is therefore aligned with the essential nature of our tripartite soul. Okay? And so what, what, what Plato is suggesting is that first of all, the, uh, uh, the ideal society is one which is aligned, not just in terms of orientation, right? Uh, where do we as a society want to go? But it is aligned structurally with Plato's imagination of our essence. It's a, it's a classic move that I will suggest to you. If you, take, if you took 3080 with me, uh, you, 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 you know about the, the way that I view these classic moves that are made, in, in particularly in political philosophy. Uh, uh, I take a position that quite apparently throughout, uh, throughout history, but whenever you see a big brain come along and suggest to others that they need to change the way that they live, and so they, the, they must change their way of being into this other state, and, and entire society and government was cha must change into this other way of being. The, the best way, perhaps, to, to, to make your argument resonate with people at, 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 a, at, at a platonic super, uh, supranatural, meaning, meaning the rational and more than that, right? To get them to feel that what you're saying is right for them, you need to appeal to the individual's imagination of what, as a species, we are at our essence. Okay, and, and so in 1651, this is you know a, 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 a recasting of, of what uh, of what uh, those of you who took 3080 with me in 1651 when Thomas Hobbes right and the Leviathan makes his famous argument for uh, the the con the continuity of a monarchy uh, uh, because it's in our best interest. What Thomas Hobbes is arguing is that we, we, we need to continue to, 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 to labor under a monarchy, uh, even though by this point in the mid 1600s, most of us realize that this oligarchical system sucks, right? But we need to stick with it. Why? Because it's in our own best interest. Why, why the hell would that be? We need a strong king in order to maintain order because, because we at our essence are homicidal maniacs. Thomas Hobbes is arguing for a particular political order uh, and, and he's appealing to, to the individual's understanding of who we ultimately are. In our natural state, right? We're homicidal maniacs. Even if we were a badge. And we seek to arrest somebody for, for supposedly passing a counterfeit $20 bill, right? And, and, and then Locke comes along, right? And he, and he makes the same move. In our natural state, right? Uh, we started picking up stuff that, be, that belonged to nobody else. And we said, this is mine. That's private property. And so we organized, we established uh, government in order to protect our private property, right? This is the type of move that, that all the great all the greats make when they are trying to convince masses of people that they need to either continue or change a particular way of being, a particular way of organizing an entire society, right? So uh, uh, what I'm suggesting with this long-winded uh, digression is that Plato, Plato conceives of this, this, this classic uh, uh, a mode of, ar of argumentation, this form of rhetorical tool to appeal to who we imagine we, we were in our natural state. Because whoever and whatever we were at our, in our natural state, chances are we're probably just the same. We just have different, more sophisticated 
toys and, and societal constructs, but we're the same type of animal. And, and Plato has a hunch that we all feel this way, that, we, that there is at some level a recognition for all of our progress and all of our changes and, 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 and the different ways that we adorn ourselves through time. We're, we're, we're the same animal. And so uh, Socrates says, the ideal society uh, is compartmentalized uh, structurally in, in, into three, three different classes. Now, when, when, uh, when we use the word class in, uh, in, this, in, in the sense that it's used in the Republic, of course, uh, uh, we want to immediately invoke perhaps the, the conception and perception of class from a Marxian from a Marxian perspective, right, uh, uh, economic uh, economic classes. One could do that, except here, here's, here's part of Plato's trick. He's preempted that, why? Because there are no economic classes in Plato's society, why? Because it's a communist state, right? We, we, we all in Plato's Republic, the ideal society, we all have minimal uh, private property. We all have our own toothbrushes and calzones, good thing. But you know, beyond that, uh, beyond that, we, we have very very few uh, uh, personal artifacts. Okay, so it's not class in that sense. It's 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 class in terms of vocational, the different type of good that each individual class uh, 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 delivers to the rest of us in the ideal society. And and so one class is uh, is basically the. Uh, the guys who run the joint. In the Republic, Plato refers to them in different ways. Uh, le uh, let us use the one, uh, uh, the one term that I think he uses the most in the Republic, which is the philosopher king, the philosopher king. So the philosopher kings are the ones who, who, who constitute the government. And, and then the, 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 the second class, if you will, within this, uh, uh, within this society are the soldiers. Right, they are the ones who uh, who protect us. Right, they are the ones who who protect us from uh, from uh, uh, you know, wrongdoers, evildoers from without. Right, like Sparta and you know all these other guys who just who just want to come in and uh, uh, slay us, take our stuff. Uh, and, and they're the ones who maintain order in the streets. Uh, you know, uh, uh, when and where necessary. So th those uh, those are uh, those are the soldiers. Right. Um, and, and then the, the, the third part of the tripartite society is, of course, the rest of us were the working slobs, were the guys who do the work that society depends on in order to, uh, in order to continue to, uh, to fu function and even flourish. We're the ones who till the fields, uh, we're, we're, the, we're the craftsmen who make the, uh, the shoes and what little artifacts of clothing that we have, right? So it's the working class. Uh, and, and then uh, uh, Socrates, uh, 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 goes on to describe to, to Glaucon uh, why it is that this society makes sense, not just from a rational perspective, but from a deeper perspective. Uh, and, and so Socrates at this point in the Republic begins to explain uh, to Glaucon uh, his notion of the soul. Now, this is one area of the Republic where where I really agree with those who, who believe that most of what is in the Republic are the intellectual innovations of Plato and not Socrates. Um, be, because we otherwise know from this other, this other guy, uh, 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 Xenophon, that uh, who's the only other guy who wrote about Socrates apparently, that um, Socrates notion of the soul really was a temporal one. It, it's not at all clear that Socrates believed that the soul predates or outlasts uh, outlast our, 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 our physical being. So when Socrates starts talking of the soul in, in this other trippy way, it's clear that this is Plato. This is Plato's disruptive innovation that will, for, will forever change the course of Western intellectualism. Um, so let, let me just say this is Plato's position. Because at, at, at some point, I, I, I think it's just it's fair and appropriate to just uh, 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 abandoned the notion that, that this was Socrates' position. It's Socrates' mouth flapping in the Republic that says we have three souls. But it's, it's Plato's 
It's Plato's insight that, that is suggesting to us through the ages that we do have a soul, it's eternal, and it is essentially comprised of, uh, of, uh, of, of three components. Plato wants us to know that, that we have three parts to our soul. There is the intellectual, uh, 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 there, there is the, the, the will, right? The, the, the will that animates our life, right? And, 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 and gives us power, gives us, give us, gives us vitality, right? Makes us, some of us wake up in the morning and say, oh, fuck yeah, it's on, it's another day, man. What's next for me, right? Uh, it's it's this this part this part of our soul right that that finds that finds its manifestation and and, and perhaps its ultimate glory and in, in that person who wakes up at five o'clock in the morning so that she can spin right stationary on her cycle right and 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 she's going through this whole COVID experience man just spinning right uh, uh, why why because she's because she is of course terribly out of shape no. She, she's a, she, she's, she's a God, right? It's the perfect, perfect body, right? But, but yes, she spins every day. Why does she spin every day, right? She, when, when she's got a perfect body, it's because she wants to keep a perfect body. But it's also because she has this will, right? This will that expresses itself from deep within herself, right? And so this is just who she is, right? It's a part of her will. Uh, the, the, the third part of our soul is, of course, the appetitive part. This is where we have, this is where we have our appetites, as I, as I telegraphed last week. This is where we have our, uh, our hungers for food uh, and, for, and for drink, uh, 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 and then the mind-altering drink um, and drogas. Uh, this is where we have our hunger for sex and then Mm, uh, yeah, more sex, and this is where we have, this is where we have our hunger for stuff. This is where the bling thing resides, and and I, I think I suggested last week that this was this was Plato's most most abiding, most abiding concern that of all of all of the intoxicants that we can fall under the spell of, right? The, the greed of material things is the one which will not just destroy our physical being. It's the one that may destroy our eternal soul. Because it's, it's, it's the devotion to the material thing. It's the making of a God, if you will, of that which is material, which from, from, a, from a platonic perspective is, is, is the most mundane. It's the most profane. It's the most insane. Why? Because materialism is, is, doesn't even exist. The material thing doesn't exist. It's an illusion, man. So of all the things to give yourself to, to give yourself to that, right, which at best is temporal and, 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 and at worst, and this is, this is where, where Plato is really coming from, it doesn't even exist. To worship the non-existent thing, to Plato, to, to, to negate yourself, not just to subjugate yourself and to subject yourself, but to negate your soul in the servants of the deification, right? The, the, the making of a God. This physical shit, Plato says, no, oh, the... The other hungers may destroy your life. Speaking very personally as a recovering alcoholic, th this part of this this part part of the Platonic imag imagination rings. Per th there's a special resonance for me in, 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 in this particular aspect of, 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 of the Platonic imagination. Other appetites can destroy our life, but but. The giving up of ourselves to to the inanimate object that 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 can that can destroy the eternal of us. Um, so, 
So Glaucon is 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 is, is, is trying to follow Socrates uh, in in in, exp in explaining this, and so it's at this point that uh, that that Socrates explains to him the reason why you ask the question what is justice, the reason why it does it does not has never and may may never exist in this physical reality is because your soul has a recollection of of justice when it experienced it in the realm of the forms the 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 real world is it is that which is to us uh, uh currently uh, the invisible world but he says it is invisible because of our, our, our limited, uh, 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 the, the limited space-time construct that we have in our brains. And, and, and so someone remind me, if I, if I lose my train of thought, as I often do, I, I need to make the connection uh, uh, between this aspect of, of Platonic epistemology. What is epistemology? Epistemology is, is the philosophy or, or the study of how we can even know anything. And then the other side of epistemology, which is the the the, the basis of, of 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 not just philosophy but but anything which can be intellectualized. There's epistemology and ontology. Epistemology is how do we know anything? How is it that we even know anything? Ontology is the other side. Ontology, epistemology, ontology. Ontology is what is knowable, right? So epistemology is, how can I even know anything? And then ontology is, okay, well, what are those objects that can be known? Okay. Uh, and, and so, for, and so uh, on, ontology is generally regarded as, 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 as objects, as things, right? Uh, and and, and, and what, what Plato's epistemology is saying is that ontologically, that which is for us to know is not in, in, in the physical visible world, it's in the non-physical invisible, but knowable uh, a realm of the forms. That is where true reality lies. Now, I realize I'm, I'm repeating myself, but I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to establish the, 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 same, the same foundational perspective that undergirds, that undergirds the, the entirety of the Platonic imagination in different ways because I, I realize it's it's um, it's it's not you know uh, that we're not used to we're not necessarily used to this way of, uh, of understanding that 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 which could that which could be understood but what I want to suggest to you is that this trippy imagination does underlie uh, uh, much of the Western tradition and we take certain things for granted now, like the 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 reality, or if you will, uh, 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 the falsehood that have, that many have uh, have have accepted for uh, 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 for millennia of heaven, right? And, and so, uh, uh, with, with no offense to any particular cosmological imagination, right? Um, if, if, if it's easier for the, for the student to, 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 to use, use the analogy of heaven when, when, uh, when, when I'm referring to uh, 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 Plato's uh, realm, realm of the forms, then, 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 then go with that. Because I, I will suggest uh, 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 next week that uh, after Plato comes this guy Platonus, and then after Platonus uh, 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 comes this guy uh, uh, Augustine, and, and Augustine or St. Augustine, if you will, it is his synthesizing of, uh, of, of, of an Aristotelian imagination of the world as it appears to be, the Platonic imagination of an other world as being the real world, secondly, and then thirdly, this relatively still new Christian narrative of, of, of this amazing guy who lived for 400 years ago or so, as Augustine is writing his classic City of God, 
this amazing guy who apparently lived 400 years ago named Jesus, who was crucified and then fuck, came, came back to life. Came back to life in order for us to truly understand that everything that he said while he was walking among us as physical beings is in fact the eternal truth. The, 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 the core truth of this guy Jesus being, which he proves by, by coming back from life, is that there is an eternity. And, 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 and there is a way to live a life which uh, never ends. That's a platonic imagination, though. You see that? And any an eternal reality that we came from and that we, we get to go back to once we physically die. And so death is as illusory as the supposed physical existence itself is. Because to, to, to die from a life that never really existed is, means you never died. It means you never really existed, but you didn't exist. You didn't exist only through a space-time construct because our soul is, is beyond space-time. And, and, and Augustine synthesizes the Platonic imagination, the Aristotelian scientific investigation with the Christian narrative that, 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 that in a way that, that, that Plato's message did not appeals to people's sentiments at, 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 in, a, in a profoundly emotive way, right? It, 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 be, it becomes profoundly, profoundly personal, right? Plato doesn't say Socrates, Socrates was a god and we must worship Socrates, and Socrates is the way, and Socrates loves you deeply, personally. If he had, all of history might have, might, might have, been, might have been very different, but it, it played out in the way that it, that it, in the way that it played out. But what I'm, what I'm suggesting, to all due respect to the sensibilities of, of, of the Christian narrative, The imagination of a heaven and, 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 and what it may mean to us significantly comes from this one guy named Augustine, whose crafting of early Catholic and then, uh, uh, and then to some, in some respects, a uh, 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 Protestant imagination is, is, is foundational. And he, he, he builds this foundation, I, let, me, let me suggest, right, with a blend of three forms of concrete. The Aristotelian notion is, 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 is one form to make concrete, right, this new imagination. The Platonic imagination, right, uh, is, is another form that, that helps to cement all of this, right? Uh, but it's, it's, it's the Christian narrative of a loving Jesus, who, who makes the the fire and brimstone God of the uh, of the of the Jewish Judea tradition, which which obviously did not go very far beyond the Jewish tribe, but now it's a loving God. It, it's 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 not the one an, anymore who's pissed off and is going to smite your ass. Jesus is the loving instantiation of of the eternal good. Plato's good becomes the, the Augustinian, the Catholic, and the Christian, uh, 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 the Christian God. So, so Glaucon is trying to hang with his master uh, Socrates' uh, articulation of, uh, 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 of all of this, of all of this trippy stuff. And so, uh, it's, it's at about, uh, it's at about this point that, um, I'm just checking the time, bear with me. Uh, it's at about uh, this point that, uh, that uh, uh, Socrates says, this is the form of society 
that may give rise uh, 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 to justice because it is aligned uh, with the, the, the essential structure and nature of our soul. And Glaucon says, I, I, I think I'm getting it. Can you elaborate a little bit, uh, a little bit more on that, on that master? And so Socrates says, just as the, the, the real trick of life is to harmonize, to maximize, to maximize each unto itself, the three parts of your soul, but then to harmonize these three parts of your soul, right? Those among us who are able to, to, to celebrate, act through and harmonize these three parts of our soul, right? By, by harmonizing uh, our, our intellect, by, 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 not just, by, by, by not just maximizing our, our own inherent genius, and, and then browbeating everybody in the room by, by showing them that, that I'm the smartest person in the room. No, that's, that, that is a use of your intellect, but that ain't wisdom, brother. The wise person exercises prudence, right? That old-fashioned term prudence, and, and Plato invokes it. Prudence. Um, intelligence plus prudence equals wisdom. Prudence is the wise use, wise use of superintelligence. Okay? So it's not just the maxing out of that part of the soul. It's harmonizing that with the, with the appropriate way to be, right? And then the person's will, right? That dynamic uh, 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 extroversion of ourselves. Well, it's, it's not just about proving that you're the biggest and the baddest, right? It's, it's, it's being able to, to, to moderate and modul modulate your behavior in such a way that that your will is is regulated right and 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 and, and at, the, at the appropriate time uh, uh, constrained and restrained by the recognition that it ain't all about you all the time you exist in a family and there are people you know, in a family who have needs, and oftentimes these needs compete. We exist in a society, right? And, and, and we all have certain wants and, and, and desires, right? Uh, uh, we all want the remote, perhaps, at times, at the same time, right? And so we all want to manifest our will and, and impose our will uh, upon others. But there are others, is the point. We're not islands unto ourselves. And, and then with, with, with the appetites, we must exercise uh, uh, what Plato refers to as temperance. Adam Smith in his 1759 uh, masterpiece, Theory of Moral Sentiments, before, uh, uh, before he describes capitalism, this new innovation that will forever change the world, before he describes that for us in 1776 with the Wealth of Nations, Adam Smith first wants us to understand that it is through platonic temperance, or, or the term that Adam Smith uses, self-command. We know it as self-control. Okay, we all have appetites. We all have needs and desires. Control thyself, man. Exercise some, some restraint. And, and, and so Plato, at this point in the Republic, is having Socrates give, give voice to, uh, 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 to, to, this, to this dynamic. The individual who is able to harmonize uh, her, her wisdom and her will and her desires in a social setting, right, uh, with uh, and, and among other people, that's the individual who may begin to practice and to manifest and represent for the rest of us to see the just individual. That's the person who, who, who may begin to, to practice justice with the people around her. You can't know justice 
until uh, un until you know your your own intellect, your own will, your own desires, and your ability to modulate each of those aspects of your soul in a social context. That is where justice may be born. And so to go from the general to, to the specific, if we can arrive at a society where a critical mass of us being able to harmonize the three aspects of our soul and practice justice, righteousness as to one another, at some point, whatever that number is for any particular society, enough of us are practicing justice with one another. That is the society from whence justice may arise. But to truly know justice is, is to know justice as, as it exists, where it exists. To truly know justice is, is, to, is to have lived individually and lived collectively as a society In a way, Ashley, can you mute yourself? In a way, in, in a way where where we all uh, practice justice with one another, in pursuit of an ultimate truth. Now, but the truth, if it if it is ever to be truly known, will likely first be found by those who are a predisposed. To, to the to the capability intellectually mainly to be able to 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 pursue the investigation right uh, uh, toward its end um, um, but but also b are supported by the rest of us in that if if, if you will holy endeavor and that is why society must be structured in, in the way that it must be structured not just because it resonates with the soul but because so structured, okay, the philosopher kings, uh, they, they don't have to concern themselves with the concerns of a material world. Why? Because we have all in this communist state, we have all forsaken, right, the allure of, 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 of material stuff. And in this society, uh, a wealth and power, of course, as I hope I ended my last session with, wealth and power are divorced as a matter of law. The philosopher king has even less material stuff than the rest of us, right? The philosopher king, the guys who rule the joint, they are free to responsibly govern because they're not distracted by the attraction, right? The, the magnetic compulsion of, uh, of material blame. The, mon the mundane material world doesn't hold them down, right? They are not surrounded by people who are caught up in materialism and their material needs are, are provided for uh, 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 by these uh, ideally non-materialistic non uh, 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 people. Um, Glaucon asks, well, how, how do, how do philosopher kings get to be philosopher kings? And, and, and how, how does one join, join the army? How, how, how does one, how does one uh, change jobs, basically? And, and it's at this point that that we get an insight in, into what is for many of us uh, 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 the darker part of, uh, of uh, Plato's uh, political philosophy and, 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 and insights into Plato's understanding of, uh, of uh, some of the subtleties and insidious nature of, uh, uh, of our weaknesses as individuals. Uh, 
Socrates explains to Glaucon that philosopher kings are selected uh, and soldiers are selected and workers are selected for their, voc their vocations uh, at, at a very early age. And whatever they are told by the state is going to be their vocation, their lot in life, their job uh, for the rest of their life is exactly the way it's going to be. Uh, at this point, Glaucon, having been raised in a society, uh, uh, Athens, where there is at least some uh, uh, social mobility, right? Uh, uh, Glaucon kind of recoils in horror. And Socrates understands what he's dealing with. And so Socrates needs, knows that he needs to uh, explain to uh, Glaucon and to us the, the, the real politic, if you will, of uh, uh, the, the ways of the world as, as, as they must be. And so Glau uh, uh, Socrates first invokes this metaphor, look, uh, bronze is bronze and silver is silver and gold is gold. And, and, and each of them are beautiful uh, and they have their utility uh, and their value and their importance, right? Now, silver may want to be gold and bronze may want to be silver uh, 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 or, you know, man, I'm bronze. I, I'd love to be silver, man. I'd be really happy with that shit. But man, if I could be gold, wow. And, and, and uh, Plato's message to us is that, and, and, and in, in this regard, uh, Plato establishes himself as someone who, who, who believes that we're not necessarily created equal. At, at, at least what Plato is suggesting is that, uh, is that uh, we each have different skill sets and, and innate predispositions. Uh, and, and some of us are simply better suited by whatever genetic Con, uh, a genetic constitution, right? The age-old question, is it nurture, is it nature? And Plato says, yeah, <laughs> right? Um, so in, in, in the Republic, this is the way it works. All children in the Republic are taken from their families at infancy, and they are basically raised by the state. Uh, and, and so a child is taken, uh, is taken from her parents uh, uh, after just a few days. Uh, and and they, they are raised with, with other children uh, by the state, by teachers appointed by the philosopher kings, and some of the, some of the teachers are themselves uh, uh, philosopher kings. And, and they are trained from, from infancy in the ways of the state. Basically, they, they, they are each trained in, uh, in uh, one, uh, various crafts. In case they, they are selected to, to be among the working class. Also, all of these kids are trained in various uh, uh, martial arts and fighting arts and, and uh, athletic, uh, uh, athletic disciplines in order to, uh, to, to, to create uh, an, an, an athletically pristine, skilled, uh, and, and prepared uh, uh, entrant into a military academy if that is the decision that is made by the state at the appropriate time. Similarly, every child, everyone is also trained in the intellectual arts. They go to school and they are, they, they are taught uh, 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 rhetoric and writing and language and logic and reasoning, right? Uh, to, to, to see if they might have the makings of, uh, of a student in, uh, uh, in philosopher king school. And then at the age of 10, 11, or 12, uh, all of these students, everyone in the Republic goes through the same ritual. All of these students uh, are, are, then, are, are then brought to, to, to the, uh, the culmination of their 10, 11, or 12 years of, uh, uh, of hard work, right? And they are each told in this, in, in this, in this beautiful, beautiful ceremony. Uh, what their vocation is, and so you know, one by one, they're 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 brought forward, right? Uh, uh, Timmy, uh, uh, you you're going to the military academy, right? And everyone goes, hey, Timmy, that's fucking great, man. 
right? Uh, 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 Josefina, uh, uh, you, you're going to shoemaking school. Ah, Josefina, that's great. Man. Right? And then a few kids, just a few kids are told, right? You are now going to philosopher king school where you will be, you know, uh, 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 you, you will hone the craft of the intellectual inquiry and what it takes to be, uh, uh, to be a good governor of state. And after 30, 40, 50 years of, of schooling in philosopher school, maybe you will then graduate to, to become one of, one of the rulers, one of the philosopher kings who's actually ruling uh, over, over the, entire, the entire republic. And so every kid at the age of 10, 11, or 12 is given their vocation for the rest of their lives. Glaucon's kind of tripping out at this, as, as, you, might, as you might imagine. Uh, uh, Socrates uh, 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 sees this. Uh, he understands what going, what's going on. And, uh, uh, and so he, he needs to, to, to deepen his explanation uh, so that Glaucon and our understanding of, of, of what, what is necessary and why is, is deepened. Socrates is saying essentially to Glaucon, everybody accepts their fate because from the time they are born, everyone looks forward to this day to, to accept whatever fate they're, they're given. And, and everyone since their infancy knows that whether they're told they're bronze, silver, or gold, whether they're going to worker bee school or military academy or philosopher king college, everyone knows that that's going to be a beautiful thing, simply to be in the service of the state. And everyone knows this, why? Because they've never known any other reality. It's kind of like being born and raised in North Korea right now. You don't necessarily know how bad you got it, right? Uh, I, was, uh, I was born and raised not too far from uh, uh, Cal State LA campus. You remember Cal State LA? Yeah, I hear it's still there. And uh, uh, let's just say, I, 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 I was not, exact, I, I was not ex exactly born, born into wealth or power. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, speaking for myself, I, I had no idea how poor Mama and I were. I, I, I did. I had no idea until a certain point, right? Where, where, where as, a, uh, as a little boy, you kind of get out in the world, right? You go out, you, you go out in the bus, right? And you see other neighborhoods, and you see the way that uh, uh, that other people are living, and, and 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 then it occurred to me, right, that some of the stuff that I saw on my little black and white TV was actually true. There are people who have wealth and they do live in a different way. But until, until that time, I didn't know, man. I, I didn't know, right? There was me, there was mama, uh, uh, and there was our neighborhood, <laughs> you know? And, you know, we all pretty much, you know, kind of sort of had it, you know, kind of sort of had it the same way. Uh, we, we, we are now introduced via Socrates and the Republic uh, to Plato's famous uh, allegory uh, of, of the cave. Uh, once upon a time, uh, apparently, uh, there was a group of slaves and uh, they were all chained in such a way uh, that, that they, they could not stand, they could not rise, uh, they, 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 they could not even turn their heads and their arms were, uh, were chained behind them, right? And, and this is the way that they lived day after day, year, year after year. Yes, let's forget about all, 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 all the medical, all the medical and psychological implications of, 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 of this, this the thought experiment that is, that is the infamous allegory of the cave. So all of these slaves are chained and bound in this way, okay? And every day, all day, year after year, 
they uh, they stare at the reality in front of them. Okay, it's all it's all they've ever seen. It's all they've ever known. It's all it's all they could possibly believe in. And so, uh, over time, they 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 become better and better and more profoundly expert in in in, in the arts uh, of distinguishing this this in front of them versus this, and they come to understand and perfect uh, uh, the the reality that this is obviously a ducky. Uh, this, on the other hand, is obviously a doggy. Okay, and, and, and so year after year, they perfect that they perfect the intellectual arts of discerning the reality that lies in front of them. Right? They 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 give each other classes, right? And understanding duckhood and dogginess, right? Uh, they they take exams, right? To determine who among them is the best, right? At, 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 dis, at discerning the essence of duckhood, right? Versus dogginess. One day, and in the allegory of the cave in the Republic, it's, it's not explained exactly how, how, how this comes to be. But one day, one of these slaves is able to break free. Okay? Uh, and he, he's, he's a male in the story, naturally. He, he rises, right? Uh, and, and he just instinctively knows Right, that he needs to turn around, and, and, and perhaps, oh, I don't know, get the hell out of this place. And, and so, as he rises and he turns around, right, as his eyes adjust, he, his eyes are adjusting to the to the darkness. Right, he is no longer staring into this blaring light, which is occasionally pu uh, uh, punctuated by by, uh, uh, by reality the doggy, the ducky, whatever, right? And it occurs to him that he, he and all of his sister and brother slaves have apparently always existed in, in, in this cave-like thing, okay? And he can see, right, that all is darkness except for a couple of sources of light, right? And there's, there's this light over here that, that, that appears to be closer to him, but there's this other light, right? Which which appears to have depth, and, and 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 it occurs to him that this may actually lead somewhere, right? And this other light, which is on the uh, on, on on the back wall of what 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 he now understands to be a cave, this is the light that he is instinctively drawn to, and so he begins to make his way uh, uh, toward this light, uh, which is which is the mouth of a tunnel opening up into this underground cave. And as he's making his way toward this, he looks over his shoulder and he sees everything that constituted his reality. And he can see that this, this is actually all of reality is the wall of this particular cave, right? And he can see his, his brother and sister slaves still chained up there, but he sees something else. There, there, there is this, this half wall, like a parapet, right? Be behind, uh, behind his, behind the other slaves, and on this half wall are situated these uh, these ceramic and clay figurines. And he's staring at them, right? And it occurs to him, wait a minute, wait a minute, man, that that thing on the wall that I thought was real. That is apparently this. This thing is apparently that. Right? So let's say it's Captain America. He now understands that there's this figurine. I should have brought out my Captain America from the garage. No, I don't have a Captain America in the garage. That, that would be ridiculous, right? Well, what kind of doofus my age has, has such a thing? I would bring my Iron Man from the garage, right? And I would put it here in the lecture so that, so that I could make this point, right? And so it occurs to him, no, wait a minute. That's not Captain America on the wall. That's Captain America on this other wall, right? This is the real Captain America, and that's the real, that's the real Iron Man, and that's the real Black Widow. They, 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 they have a shape, right? They, 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 they exist. They exist in what I now understand to be a physical form. And wait a minute, trip out. Uh, 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 they have colors, man. I never understood color, right? 
There was just light and there was darkness, right? But what I now understand, the darkness and the light, these are shadows of these figurines. These are the real things. Those are simply shadows all along. And as the horror is, 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 is dawning on him, and, and, he, and, and he continues to make his way uh, uh, toward, the, toward this light, he now sees the, the, the source of the other light. There's a fire, of course, behind the half wall. And it's, it, it's, it's the light from this fire that is illuminated around these figurines that are casting the shadows upon the wall. And so now the, the depth and the depravity of, of the situation is dawning on him. Everything that he thought was the truth is a fucking lie. Always has been, right? And all of this reality that he thought was the truth, this was no accident. This, 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 this is no construct of nature, this fire and the figurines positioned in the way that they are so that they could cast these particular shadows on the wall of this cave. Uh, where he and his sisters and brothers have been enslaved. This has been done to them on purpose. It's not just that his reality was a false reality. It was a lie. This was a lie that was perpetrated on him and his sisters and brothers by somebody on purpose. And so now he knows he really needs to get the hell out of there, right? And so he is ascending, uh, he is ascending uh, up, uh, uh, up this, uh, up this, this, um, this, this hallway, out of the cave, and he's getting closer and closer to 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 the uh, to the other to the other end of uh, uh, of this hallway, and now he comes to the orifice, the mouth, uh, the mouth of the cave, and he he exits the cave, and of course he's blinded by the light which of course is a metaphor for knowledge, right? And the light outside is provided, of course, by the sun, which is a metaphor for the good, right? So this is, now we begin to see that the allegory of the cave as an allegory filled of metaphors. In other words, it is a story, the, it is a story that seeks to, to represent for us different different aspects of our, of our reality so that we can reinvestigate them from perhaps another vantage point, okay? And so his, his eyes are adjusting. He can't deal with the light. He can't deal with the truth. That's, that's what this part of the allegory is supposed to be. That sometimes the truth, the real truth, when it is first revealed to us or when we first reveal it unto ourselves, right? It's hard to take. It's hard to take at first, right? So we need to adjust now. It trips us out. It, it, it feels right, but it doesn't necessarily feel good when you first come to this realization, right? That a certain thing that you thought was true not only isn't in the current tense, it perhaps never was. And some truths come to be understood as artificial constructs that, 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 that the truth that we were laboring under previously was no accident, it was a lie. Difficult often is the initial coming to terms with the reality that we have been lied to. And so this guy's eyes are still trying to adjust, right? And so it's when you come out of the movie theater, remember movie theaters, right? Remember those, right? Pre-COVID, right? You come out of the movie theater, right? No, no, man, it's, it's so bright. Uh, 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 I can't see. Uh, I can't see. Uh, uh, I do. Uh, I do see those candies. I want some of those candies, man. I gotta get some more popcorn before I get out of here. But otherwise, I can't see. Other than that, I I, I can't see. And so he's he's looking down, right? And as his eyes adjust. He, he does see something, right, in, in, in the near below. And he's looking at it, and he, and, and he says to himself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I, I, I know what this is. I know what this is. I've seen this before. 
are those mountains? Are these trees? Are, are these real mountains? Are these real trees? At long last, right? Now, now I, I, I know and I see and I am the truth. This is beautiful, man. Look at these mountains and these trees. And they move. They, they move in ways that I, I wouldn't think trees or, or mountains to move, right? They, 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 they kind of glisten. They, they kind of shimmer. This is trippy. He raises his eyes a little bit more as, 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 as his eyes adjust, and he casts his eyes now, now up on the horizon. Wait a minute. Are those the real mountains? Those are the real trees. The real mountains and the real trees appear to be over there, way over there. So what is this? Are these shadows? Is, is this another form of shadowing of that which is real? Just like the shadowing in the cave of that which was real, except it wasn't real. What is Plato getting at? That's right. Layers and levels of perception, layers and levels of reality. So th this, 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 this is the intellectual nexus between uh, Plato's allegory of the cave and his cosmological, epistemological imagination, right? The divided line. Plato's great divided line. And Plato's divided line, as you can see for yourself at the bottom, there's that level of, uh, of, of sentience, right? Uh, perception that is based on images. And so one level of perception, one level of, of reality, perceived reality, if you will, it deals with images. A little bit more intellectually sophisticated than that, of course, is not not mere images, but not mere, uh, not not just uh, 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 mm, image as illusion, but uh, but but image a, as as apparent fact, right? And so now we move from from the illusion to the image. Okay, now we move from, if you will, the reflection in the mirror of the photograph to the photograph. And to understand the photograph and, and, what, and, and what, it, what, it, what it is, and to understand uh, uh, the illusion of the photograph in the mirror, right, is, is to go up another level in, 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 our, in, in our sentient capacity, right? We now have achieved another level of understanding. We are now getting closer to the truth of things. But then we must understand that the photograph is a photograph, right? The photograph is not in and of itself reality. It's, an, it's another way of depicting, reflecting, capturing reality. And so ultimately, as we ascend, as we rise up uh, uh, Plato's, uh, Plato's divided line, as, as we grow in our ability to, to understand that which can only be understand understood by the mind, we begin to understand that sensory perception, perhaps itself, writ large, at all, per se, is suspect. Descartes, De, De, Descartes deals with this later, right? When, when Descartes has that, fam that famous, right? Descartes begins to doubt everything. He's a true early scientist, right? He's like, shit, I don't know if anything is real. So I, Descartes, I, René Descartes, must doubt everything, the existence of everything, right? And so he says, I can't even, I, I can't even know or trust that, where's my dog? That my dog, Amber, Amber, King Lazy. Amber's not going to make an appearance, right? Amber chooses one to appear in, uh, uh, in my classrooms. Thank you very much. And, and she, she, she will appear when she's ready to, which is another way of saying when I at least want her to, <laughs> okay? Um, but, 
Descartes says, I can't trust my sensory perceptions at all. I've been drunk before, and I woke up the morning after, and I realized <laughs> what, what it can be, what, what it can mean to believe something, and then wake up and 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 and, and know and know it ain't know it ain't the truth, but regret it. And so Descartes says, "How can I know that anything really exists?" And then, of course, it dawns on Descartes, "Wait a minute, I must exist because I'm even asking the question, right?" So if nothing else exists, this must exist, the I. The I, the consciousness that, it, that is asking the questions. Now, once I open my eyes and try to reinforce right, uh, my very existence by, by looking at my arm and then pinching my arm and then drawing blood from my arm, looking at myself in my mirror, these are all just, just empirical ways through through my through my through my bodily senses to make uh, 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 to verify and validate my own existence, but I Descartes now realize, and I'm here to tell the rest of you for all uh, uh, for all posterity. We can know certain things uh, without our empirical senses, without sense, uh, without sight and and touch and, and, and taste. Right, that's a precursor to to to, to uh, Kant and Freud and Einstein and 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 other other uh, other perhaps more intellectually pristine and elevated ways of trying to understand perhaps Plato's eternal truth. Right, so that's what the the, the divided line is. The higher up you go in uh, in that in that physical construct, the 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 closer you get to the good. The good, which is the source of uh, and an eternal instantiation of the eternal truths, which are, uh, among others, uh, beauty and love uh, and uh, and truth, and, and that that which was the 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 purported the pur purported superficial um, object of Plato's Republic, uh, justice. So now uh, the slave in the, in the allegory of the cave knows that he must return to the cave. He must return and see if he can emancipate, emancipate his sisters and, uh, and brothers. Because he, he, he doesn't know what this new reality holds in store for him, but, but at, at at least an instinctual level, he knows this. He must live in reality, the true reality, right? And now that he understands that there are lev levels and layers of reality, he must know how many there are. Now he needs to know. Now he's on a quest, he's on a quest to know. And it occurs to him that there's something, there's something righteous about living in, living in the truth and pursuing, pursuing the deeper truth. Right? There's more integrity in existing in and pursuing the truth than there was than, than, than there was being a goddamn slave in a binchy lie. And so he goes back, right? He goes back into the cave, right? And once again his eyes need to adjust because now, now he's in to, now he's in total in total darkness, right? What is this suggesting? Right? He lived in darkness. He came out of darkness, right? He was born and raised in darkness. What is Plato suggesting? Sometimes when, when, when you know the truth, to go back to the old neighborhood can, can be as disorienting as the truth itself was. Once you've known the truth, Plato is suggesting, perhaps it's hard to, to, to reimpose ignorance and say, I don't want to know the truth anymore. I'm more comfortable, I'm more comfortable living the lie. And Plato says, for some of us, that's not the case. Once we know the truth, we can't exist in any other place. And, and, and this, the guy in the allegory, the protagonist, our hero, right? The unnamed hero, he is, he is such a person. He goes back, 
because he knows that that the virtuous life must be in pursuit of the truth right he's got to go across this body of water and 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 touch those apparently real mountains and trees and see if they in fact after all at last constitute reality and if they don't then he needs to scale those mountains and he needs to look beyond because he needs to find it he goes back uh, his eyes his eyes uh, uh, re readjust uh, 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 again uh, and so he he starts to try to explain right to his sisters and brothers hey hey we we got to get out of here man we got to get out of here right you're not going to believe me but all of this all of this it's a lie man it's a lie that's not a no shut up shut up that's not a duck that's not a dog no no you got to believe me man right what's happening at this point in the allegory of the cave they don't believe him they don't believe him right so at first at first they're they're amused and bemused right oh you're back right right what are you saying ah oh, trip out right uh, 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 Johnny's back, right? You, 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 can, can you, uh, I can't turn my head. Can you guys turn your head? I can't turn my head, right? But I can hear him, right? Johnny's talking some shit, ain't he? What the hell is he talking about? Johnny, Johnny, shut up already, right? We're in class, right? We're investigating the philosophical implications of, of, of the duck, okay? After a while, they're no longer amused by Johnny whatever his name is, right? So what happens, what happens now? Now they're kind of getting pissed off. Now they're kind of getting pissed off, right? Because he won't shut up. Now, as they listen to what he's saying, and the apparent conviction and force with which he's saying it, now they're getting concerned. Now they're getting concerned, right? This guy's lost his mind. This guy's beginning to scare us, right? Uh, the, this guy's talking blasphemy now. This, this ain't funny anymore. This guy's challenging our whole belief system. He's, th this guy's challenging our way. This guy has the audacity, right, to leave us and then come back and, uh, 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 and tell us that we're fools, right? This guy, this guy represents a threat to our way of life. Do you understand this? So now what is, what, what is, what, what is the unnamed hero in the allegory of the cave beginning to realize? Now he's beginning to realize that they're no longer uh, uh, irritated with him. They're no longer even afraid of him right? They are convinced that they need to rise up and kill him. And it occurs to him as he's, as, as, as he's listening to them whisper among themselves, how are they going to rise up and slay his ass? It occurs to him, wait a minute, for years, we were all chained up, right? Do, doing, doing our little Sunday schools, right? And, and, and not once did anybody say, hey, how, how the hell can we rise up and get out of here? No one ever asked himself that question until I came back, right, and, and, tried, and, and tried to deliver some truth to them. What's, what's Plato's point at this point, right? You can question a lot of things, quite apparently, in the human experience. But you mess with someone's belief system. You, you, you mess with someone's sacredness. Their, their conviction in the sacred? That's, that, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother gravity of offense. You see that? Plato is saying, they never ask themselves, how can we break free of these bonds? Until the question arose, the need arose to kill somebody. 
for questioning their sacred reality, the only one that they had ever that they had ever known. And so, what you know, what, why why did I say that in you know the Plato the the allegory of the, um, of the cave, among other things, uh, it introduces us to to this to, to this dark side of of, uh, of Plato, or perhaps perhaps better put, to to Plato's understanding of the dark side of us, because at this point, uh, Plato is talking about uh, about a number of things: state propaganda. Because th this is this is not just a lie of some of some guy against some other guy. What Plato is uh, is 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 inviting us to appreciate here is is the carefully orchestrated lie of the state of propaganda. What Plato is further inviting us to 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 investigate is what is it about the nature of group think that we can we can accept a lie as a falsehood more easily perhaps when it is accepted by others around us is there a propensity uh, in, in 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 the human social ex experience uh, to to let go of our own individual autonomous intellect and to just accept what everybody else seems to be accepting, which is that this is a duck, whereas this is a dog. So there, there, I, I, there, there, there are layers. There are layers of, of, of potential meaning, if you're willing, uh, in uh, in the uh, uh, in in the allegory in the allegory of the cave, and so what Socrates is saying to Glaucon is that the state must must incept and perpetuate, if you will, this lie, so that there is social order, so there is conformity. So everyone in society just understands that for the good of society and our ultimate objective, the hopeful one day reaching by one among us, a philosopher king of the truth, we must not only tolerate a totalitarian communist state, but we must, we must, we must accept uh, Psych, uh, psychological totalitarianism. The, the totalitarian psychological construct. The state of North Korea, in other words. So this, this, this is very much a part of, of, of Plato's, Plato's Republic, right? So perhaps, perhaps one can see the utility of, 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 of this type of imagination. If your desire is to become uh, uh, the dictator, the totalitarian, right? Uh, what more need you understand uh, uh, beyond Plato's Republic? It's, it's a state organized in a particular way, right? Where, where individual freedom, individual liberty, uh, 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 private property uh, is, is, is given up. Your very children are given up to the state in furtherance of an, up an articulated greater good. And so to reflect back, you know, 2,300 year, 2, years later uh, on the Republic, how many times have, have, have we seen I examples, not just, not just totalitarian authoritarian examples, but e e even purportedly democratic, more or less uh, 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 society situations. 
How many times have we seen a, a, a situation where, where rulers justify that which they say must be done, a temporary suspension of civil liberties, for example, uh, or, or the elimination of an, of an entire people, genocide, right? Uh, on the basis of there is a greater good that we as a society are pursuing after all. And that is why we must, that is why we must do this. That, that, is why, that, that is what this greater good that we are called, that we are called to do, that is what justifies and even sanctifies that which must be done. And, and, and so these people or that people or, 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 or that other ethnicity must, must die. That's an extreme example, but <laughs> I, it's, an, it, it's, an, it's an important example of, uh, of the replication, the playing out in, 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 in a particularly da, uh, 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 dastard way of, uh, of Plato's Republic. But as, as I leave you until, uh, until next, next Monday, um, there, there's, there, there, there's also... I, I, I hope I, I, I submit for your consideration. There, there are also some, some beautiful um, implications uh, in, 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 in Plato's, in Plato's Republic, right? Because there, there, there are, there, there are, there have been societal, e e even intergenerational civilizational calls calls to duty calls to action calls to greatness which are given voice to in the republic and 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 let me let me let me uh, throw this out for your consideration not just given voice to in the republic but created in the republic because next week when we talk about uh, uh, Aristotle, but then Plotinus and uh, Plotinus, and, and then uh, and then uh, and then Augustine. There are themes in the Republic which quite evidently have staying power. Uh, and after the fall of Rome in 410, when 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 everyone in Europe and, and parts beyond were convinced that this was the end of the world. The Roman Republic had lasted for over a thousand years. That's not only, not only is, was it the only reality that anyone knew within their lifetime, it was the only reality that history had recorded. There was, there was virtually no recorded history at the fall of the Roman Empire of anything that, that, that preceded the inception of the Roman Empire, right? It was almost as if the Roman Empire had always been. And now it was collapsing. Surely this was, this was the end of the world. So in, 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 in this apocalyptic hysteria, how could it be that there would arise a narrative, a belief system so compelling that it would last then without any without any governmental construct or authority it would last for well over a thousand years in many places to this day and i want to suggest it, it it wasn't just the christian narrative but as as early christianity was given its form by guys like augustine and 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 and, and of the early church fathers if you will who gave the, the, the Christian narrative and the Christian structure its form in, 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 in the early days, nobody crafted it uh, more, more tightly and more lastingly than he who would be later, uh, 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 later beatified as St. Augustine. 
but there are, there are important Platonic Plato's imaginations that are, that are woven into not so much uh, uh, Augustine's confessions, arguably the first, uh, the first autobiograph, uh, autobiography in the Western tradition, but in his, but in his, uh, uh, in, in his city of God, uh, which, uh, in which we see the crystallization of what would become some of the, some of the, some of the, some of the more lasting intellectual pillars and constructs of, of, uh, of the, of Christendom. Uh, 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 to this day. But am I saying that, that without Plato, that, that there is no Christian imagination of heaven? No, not, not necessarily. Am I saying that, that without Plato, uh, there may not be a Christianity, there may not have been a Christianity, and, 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 and the way that, that we know that it, it existed and persisted for well over a thousand years? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, that, that when Alfred North Whitehead said about 100 years ago, all of Western philosophy consists of merely a series of footnotes to Plato, I, I, I think it can be, more, I, I think there is a level of accuracy and faithfulness in suggesting that, uh, that all of Western civilization, its, it's intellectual constructs, philosophical but beyond uh, 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 philosophical, are, are largely conceived Conceived and accepted uh, by, by this by this uh, by this guy Plato, uh, uh, 23, uh, 2300 years ago. Uh, so, if you have any questions about uh, about the uh, uh, about your reflection paper due by uh, late Friday, uh, uh, late evening Friday, let me know. Uh, I'd appreciate it. Uh, uh, continue viewing. Most importantly, the um, uh, uh, the PowerPoint. Next week we uh, uh, we conclude uh, Plato. We're mostly done with Plato. Uh, do Aristotle and, and get into uh, uh, Augustine and Aquinas, and, and and just a just a just a final thought. I I I don't set set this up and ask you to walk through through this uh, uh, with me, because the the intent is to proselytize or or to suggest any particular belief system, whether it's a theistic one or or or, uh, uh, or, or not, over another. This is the nature and history of the Western tradition from, from whence uh, more or less representative democracy uh, and, uh, and capitalism and capitalism arise. And some, some foundational uh, uh, um, aspects of, of, of our current, of our current uh, 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 groupthink are, are vestiges and, and recastings of ideas that were first conceived uh, over 2000, over 2000 years ago by guys uh, named uh, Socrates and Plato and Jesus, uh, etc. Uh, so I, thanks for your time. I, I owe you some time. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, please, uh, uh, please email. And if I don't get back to you in 24 hours, at that point, yes, feel free to uh, feel free to text the uh, uh, my cell phone is on the uh, is on the syllabus. Thanks, guys. Be well and be safe. All right. I'll see you next week. You. Uh, hey, Professor. Yep. Okay. Uh, one quick thing. I just wanted to apologize for being uh, late to class. I was at a protest and had to come back quickly. Yeah, I, I, I saw your email. I, I apologize for not getting a, a, a back to you. I, I, I appreciate you doing that. I, I, I take it everything went, everything was chill. Yeah, it, was, it was a local protest and um, I live in Alhambra and Alhambra PD. We had a two cars escorting us down the street and then they blocked off the street we were on in front of city hall so my city was was very nice about it cool i appreciate appreciate you doing it and telling me about it all right be safe anyone want to uh want, want to get a hold of me uh you know my, my travel schedule is rather light take care guys have a good weekend you too thanks guys see you